Hey everybody, it's Crypto Anarchist here, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about Graphene. I wanted to clear up a couple of uh, you know inconsistencies that I see people have throughout uh, the community. A lot of people don't actually understand what Graphene does. Um, Graphene is actually used in a lot of uh, delegated proof of stake cryptocurrencies. Um, I, I've said this before. I don't really like delegated proof of stake cryptocurrencies whatsoever. Um, there are things that, like, there are advantages you can get using delegated proof of stake cryptocurrencies, and those advantages are generally sp speaking, you have higher transaction volume, and you have, um, you can have quicker confirmation time, but you don't actually have a blockchain, so you don't have the security of a blockchain. That's the one thing that I think everybody should always remember. This this applies to things like IOTA as well. IOTA uses a completely, like, it doesn't even use a blockchain, so you guys got to be very careful when you're dealing with something that, uh, has a high transaction volume and very quick confirmation time because that generally means they're not actually using a blockchain or they're using something uh, different than what Bitcoin is. Like, because Bitcoin's a decentralized blockchain, uh, which means no one's in control of it. Um, and so there's a lot of people who just try to say, oh, we have more transactions or, you know, we have faster confirmation time, but they're not actually using blockchain. So, you know, what's the actual value in these things? I don't really know. But Graphene's actually a very interesting technology. And I don't think, like, I'm. I'm pretty sure that Graphene is not used at all on actual blockchains. Um, it's used on things that use delegated proof of stake, which aren't actual blockchains, but it's not used on things that use actual blockchains. Um, Bitcoin Cash is looking to uh, move towards implementing Graphene. Uh, but the one thing I wanted everyone to know about Graphene is that all Graphene does is it helps nodes run more efficiently. Um, it does not allow more transactions per block. So I've seen a lot of people say, like, once you get Graphene, you can do, like, 10,000 transactions per block or 100,000 transactions per block. That's not true. All Graphene does is it helps you with uh, what it what is called block propagation. So uh, the, the issue right now with block propagation and block propagation is just when you send w the transactions from one block to another node on the network. So everybody has to download the block, right? Um, and so Graphene just helps you download the next block. The problem is, is if you're running a full node, um, you already, like when someone does an unconfirmed transaction, that is broadcast through the nodes. So the nodes have already heard, un that's what they call it. They call it hearing an unconfirmed transaction. They know about it, a node knows about it. But once you download the block, you have to download that transaction again, even though you already know about it. So what Graphene does is it makes it so that you don't have to do download these transactions twice. So basically, Graphene is a way of making nodes twice as efficient. And now, the thing you have to know about Graphene is I don't think you can use it on Bitcoin SegWit. I don't think it works whatsoever. I'd pretty sure that SegWit makes it impossible to ever implement Graphene. So this is just another reason why SegWit's not all that great. Um, but uh, the way that Graphene works is it uses uh, two technologies or two, uh, I guess you could call them programs, two protocols called Bloom Filters and IBLTs. Uh, for people who are more interested in computer science, some of you who might actually be, you know, like uh, computer science, uh, graduates, you know, if you have that degree, you might know more about this than me. Uh, I'm just trying to explain this to the layman here, so let's go ahead and talk about those. So first thing, I guess, yeah, gra Graphene just makes the nodes more efficient. So like I said, yeah, with currently the nodes download transactions multiple times. So if you're running a full node, you will hear about a transaction once, and then you'll have to download, so you have to uh, process it there, and then you have to download it again once you download the block. And so that's just really inefficient. Why are you doing it twice? So with Graphene, it ensures that your transactions are downloaded only once. And again, it's not a, it's not technically a scaling solution, but it does help with a large block size because again if you have a larger block size and you have to download everything twice as a full node that's not good you know so graphene make sure you only have to download it once you only have to process it once it really cuts down on how much work a full node has to do so graphene is great for that so it does help with a larger block but it is not a scaling solution in that it does not allow you to put more transactions in a block okay but the two things, again, that make uh, Graphene work, the first thing is Bloom Filters. So what Bloom Filters are is it's basically a way of checking two, two lists for identical entries. So a Bloom Filter, it'll take some item and it'll check to see if that item is in a list. And it does this like unbelievably efficiently. That's what Bloom Filters are for. So it basically looks at this item and it says, is this item in the list? Yes or no. Um, 
and so it's very efficient at this. The problem with bloom filters is that they can have false positives. So a false positive is when you know you say is this thing in the list, and it'll say yes when it's actually not in the list. Um, so that's an issue, especially because uh, the way that Bitcoin works, like if you're trying to download a block, if you were just using bloom filters on their own, uh, if you did have a false positive, that would mean that you would not download the block. It wouldn't work. Like so, if you have any false positives uh, when you you're, you know, downloading a block using Bloom filters to check to make sure that you don't, you know, double download something, then you just, you, it's not going to work. So it actually makes everything worse. So you can't have these false positives. So, you know, the Bloom filters are very efficient, but generally speaking, you, you know, you're, you're going to have like, you know, one or one or two or three or so false positives for each, um, each block that you do just because of the amount of information that's in there. So, Bloom filters alone, they won't do it, okay? And if you want to look up Bloom filters, uh, there's some good videos on it. Um, I'm not the guy to tell you the specifics of the computer programming of Bloom filters, but again, Bloom filters just check a list to see if something's in there, but sometimes they have false positives, so they say it's in there when it's not. Um, but then if you, if you pair a Bloom filter with uh, an invertible Bloom lookup table, uh, this uh, actually makes it basically a watertight uh, protocol and what I mean by that is an invertible bloom lookup table it eliminates the false positives of the bloom filter so an invertible bloom lookup table it's basically like a bloom filter except you check two lists for discrepancies um, and so basically the way that they uh, use bloom filters and uh, invertible bloom lookup tables together is that when you're downloading a a block. So each full node, like I said before, it hears all these transactions, these unconfirmed transactions before they're confirmed to the network. So each each node will send a list of all their unconfirmed transactions they have heard to somebody who already has that block downloaded and then that person that they send their unconfirmed transactions to will use a bloom filter to see okay which ones do we have that are the same uh, and they would eliminate those and then uh, again there would be a couple false positives when you look at the bloom filter so then they put an invertible bloom filter through to take out all or and the invertible bloom filter eliminates the false positives and so then the only thing that is left are the transactions that this node which has not downloaded a block yet does not have so this is immense because again right now when you download a new block you download all the transactions but if you use bloom filters and an invertible bloom lookup table which is what graphene does then the only transactions that you download when you download a new block are the transactions you have not seen yet okay so this is a massive increase in the efficiency it's absolutely massive um, and again the, the one thing I want you guys to remember about graphene is graphene it's not it doesn't change the number of transactions per block so technically speaking it's not a scaling solution but it does massively increase the efficiency of your full node so it does help full nodes um, process larger blocks it does help full nodes uh, you know work with larger blocks better so it it's not a scaling solution but it does help uh, with uh, scaling if that makes any sense um, but again, yeah, the whole thing about graphene is it makes nodes require less computational power but what you really need in order to um, scale is blockchain sharding and I know I've already made one video on blockchain sharding I called it parallel blockchains I kind of want to go into more detail on blockchain sharding because technically speaking like a lot of people think blockchain sharding is hard to do but all you need for blockchain sharding uh, like for Bitcoin cash if it were to implement blockchain sharding all it needs is lightning uh, it needs its second layer or second level lightning where you have the uh, bi-directional payment channels that you know obviously with Bitcoin cash they're not shared but that's all you need for blockchain sharding but anyways I hope this sort of uh, helped illuminate what graphene actually does because again graphene's not technically a scaling solution all it does is it makes nodes run far more efficiently so again with more efficient nodes yes uh, you can run a node on a larger block but technically speaking it does not it does not uh, you know technically help with the scaling issues so that's what graphene actually does but uh, yeah I hope this uh, hope this helped uh, there will be more videos coming out soon